All right guys, long time no see and I have an important announcement to make and that is I just recently got myself shredded or at least leaner than I've ever been before. You've seen me at the end of a couple of cutting phases before. You've seen me in peaked, bulked condition. I don't think you ever see my physique looking quite like this. And certainly there is a lot to uncover there. What I did, how I did it, why exactly I did it, what the strategy was, what my macros were, did I even track my macros? Lots of stuff there. I'm sure you will have a lot of questions and I promise we will get to all of that. Not in the same video though, because in this particular one, I want to address the couple of number one takeaways and lessons that I've learned from this process and the biggest eye-opening moments that I had over the course of getting to this condition that you're seeing on these pictures. So if that sounds good, let's get into it. But first of all, my name is Abel. I'm the host of the SSD podcast and sustainable self-development. And I teach ambitious trainees getting to the best shape of their lives and maintaining that in the long term in the most sustainable way possible. So if that is something that sounds interesting to you, then definitely hit that subscribe button in the bottom of the video and that bell notification icon so that you're up to date on everything that I have coming up. And with that, let's get into the video. So the first lesson I've learned from this process, let's start with something positive, is that you really have no idea what you can get out of your body. You know, if you're a guy with genetics like mine, not an overly big frame size like a six and a half inch wrist, then sure, you may never have the arms of Arnold or you may never have the incredible V taper of Frank Zane. But to be honest, when I started out on my fitness journey, I would never have even dared to dream of ever looking like I do on the photos that you're seeing here. So before you get too caught up in the comparisons and analyzing what you could potentially achieve, first of all, just put in a couple of good years of training, get very lean, and you might be surprised just how impressive you might end up looking at the end of that journey. That though brings me to the second lesson, and that is when you're getting to truly low levels of body fat, for the first time perhaps ever, you will learn the difference between battling with your mind and your brain and actually having a battle with your own body. The thing is when we are doing a cutting phase, even if it's just some short mini cut, all of us like to think that we are suffering big time. Like we are just in a battle with our body. We are pushing through boundaries. And to be honest, that's what I thought as well. And going through this diet to get into the condition that you're seeing here, really made me realize that what I felt in the past and what I thought was just some crazy suffering that I was going through was really just a matter of being mentally tired of my diet and being bored with the monotony, having to deal with some cravings and just simply being fatigued with the whole process of always having to manage social events, having to eat the same foods all the time, having to say no to certain things, missing certain foods. And this is certainly not to downplay the difficulty of any kind of dieting process or cutting phase. I know it fully well that no matter where you are, it can be very challenging to change your body composition. Even if you are at a higher body fat percentage, you have a chubbier physique at the moment and you just want to get in shape for the summer or something like that, it can be very, very difficult. It requires behavioral change, restructuring your habits and things like that. But that is 95, maybe even 99% a mindset issue. Basically, you just have to get your mindset right. You need to get into a couple of good habits, come up with a couple of simple systems in which you can manage things like social events, and you will be on your way to success. If I wanted to put it very bluntly, I could just say, man up and complete your diet. When you're doing something like this, when you're getting to truly low levels of body fat and you're pushing your body out of that state where it feels comfortable, you will learn for the first time what it's like to do all of these things right that I just mentioned before. So you're eating the right foods, you're having the right habits, you're having the right systems in place, and at certain times it's still going to be tough. And that was a very valuable experience because from now on, any kind of cutting phase that I will be doing in the future when I will just wanna get in shape for the summer or a pool party or something like that, that will be so much easier than it was before. And that can be often a very valuable experience that what you feel like is very difficult at the moment might not be very difficult at all in the future when your reference point changes and you learn how much you can actually push through. Now the next big lesson, and I know that this is something that everybody goes through who is getting truly lean at least one time in their life, 
is how much we all underestimate our body fat percentage and just how much fat we really have to lose to get into a truly lean condition. And yes, I was guilty of this in the past as well. And truth be told, the typical thought process goes something like, okay, so if I flex my abs as hard as I can and I see some blurry ab definition, that means that I'm at around 15% body fat. And then if I see some legit six pack, then I'm at around 10% body fat. And then if I drop a couple of pounds after that, then I'm really digging into the single digit body fat territory. Yeah, no. The truth is that all of us have certain positions and angles that we like to stand in front of the camera with in which we look the best. And we simply judge our leanness and estimate our body fat percentage based on how that particular position looks. You may have noticed in the past that for me, that is the most muscular front pose. That is how I tend to appear on most of my pictures. And that is simply because that's how I look the best, the most muscular and the leanest. That's what emphasizes my strong points, such as my chest and my shoulders, and de-emphasizes some, some of my weaker points, such as my arms and my back, which are less developed, less genetically gifted, I guess you could say. And that's why a lot of people don't even seem to notice much of a difference in my body fat percentage at my peak bulked condition and at my much leaner physiques. And that's why, because that is my power position. I will always look relatively lean in that particular pose. But the truth is, is that we carry body fat in a lot of other places, which we tend to ignore completely in our day-to-day -day lives. Our back, our traps, our shoulders, or thighs, hamstrings, glutes, calves even. And as you're starting to lose fat from all of those places, what you will learn over time is that there comes a point where there will be weeks when from your most appealing position, you will pretty much look identical, but your body weight is just gonna keep going down, down and down. And you will be like, what the hell, I'm not getting leaner. That is the point where you're starting to lose fat from all these other places, which you never even thought of before. And to be honest, my reference point in terms of body fat percentages and how to estimate body fat percentages changed completely. Now, when I see a guy who is posting a picture with a lean-ish, but not really dicey physique and saying, yeah, so I'm estimating my body fat percentage to be around 10%, I go, yeah, dude, no. And yes, that also means that I in the past have also underestimated my body fat percentage considerably. And yes, unfortunately, that also means that when I posted videos where I said that, yeah, guys, I finished this mini cut and I'm at 12% body fat or so, or 9% body fat or so, that was pretty much inaccurate completely. And those body fat percentages were probably three, four percentiles higher in reality. Is that awkward? Yeah, kinda. Do I feel bad about it though? Not really, because the truth is, is that the entire internet is doing that as well. And the, the truth is, is that as far as the consumer is concerned, as far as you guys are concerned, those numbers might as well be accurate. Because the thing is, most guys, when they say that they want to be 10% body fat, let's say, they don't really know what that means. It doesn't really mean anything. It's just this arbitrary thing that people attach to a given look, which they want for themselves. When they say that they want to be at 10% body fat, what they really mean is, I have an idea of how my upper body and my midsection would look at 10% body fat, and I want that look for myself. Never mind the fact that in reality, that look might actually be 13 or 14% body fat, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter because you're not going for a body fat percentage, you're going for a specific look. So as far as you're concerned, when I said in the past that I was 9% body fat, it might as well be accurate. But in reality, that was more like 13 or 14% body fat. And that brings me to the next big lesson and sad lesson that I had to learn is not only was I underestimating my body fat percentage earlier on, like everybody else, but I also considerably overestimated how much muscle mass I carried and how big I really was, just like everybody else. Okay, my thought process at the beginning of this cut was very similar to how I think most people tend to think about this, is that this is how I looked at this point. I was at around 84, 85 kilograms, and as you can see, I was looking pretty good. I had abs, I was lean by all measures pretty much, and I thought to myself, you know what? I'm gonna drop, you know, a couple of kilos. I'm gonna go down to 81, 82 kilograms and I will be shredded. Like I will be photo shoot ready. 
Yeah, let's call it 76 kilograms when that actually happened. Basically, the way it went is at 85 kilos, I started dieting and I dieted for a month. And after a month, I looked leaner, yes, but it was still not even close to being shredded or anything like that. So I was like, what the hell? So I dieted for another month. And yeah, I was leaner again, but still not shredded. I was like, what the hell is going on here? And then I dieted for another month. And then, yes, at the end of that, I was pretty much shredded. But by the end of all of that, I was at 76 kilograms or 166 pounds or something like that. Something that I weighed many, many years ago only at this point. And yes, to be fully honest with you, it was kind of painful to see those super low numbers on the scale. A, because like I mentioned, that meant that earlier on, I way overestimated how muscular I was and how much muscle mass I carried. I overestimated my FFMI, fat free mass index. And it made me realize that I am just a lot more average or a lot more below average than I thought. And it also made me realize just how freaking impressive some of those guys actually are that I thought were average, like Eric Helms, who is considerably leaner than what I've gotten to here, and he is heavier. He is over 80 kilograms, and he's the same height as me. The more important realization, though, and the flip side to all of this, is that none of that crap actually matters at the end of the day. Because really, if you're honest with yourself, are you doing this to make a certain weight or to compete in some sort of who has the higher FFMI competition? or are you trying to look a certain way? So yes, I ended up considerably lighter than what I would have wanted to. It was a bit disheartening, you know? Am I a real man even if I'm under 80 kilos at six foot? But at the end of the day, do I look good on these pictures? I think so. I'm pretty damn satisfied with the way I look on these pictures. And that's what most of you guys are going for as well. So just attaching yourself to a particular number already sets you up for something silly. And I see this with other people too, like guys that are working together with me and are filling in my application form when I'm starting the coaching process with them. They are telling me things like, I wanna be 185 pounds at 12% body fat. It's like, dude, are you trying to make a certain weight? Are you a wrestler or a weightlifter? Or are you going for a certain look? So that was a valuable realization to have as well. Now that brings me to another important realization and that sort of modifies or moderates this whole how much weight I had to lose thing is that I learned more than ever that when you're doing something that you've never done before, when you're pushing your body and your mind to a place where it's never been before, it's important to not be too ambitious with doing it all on your own. And this time I did it all on my own. I coached myself throughout the whole process and that was all fine and dandy to a point. But at the end of this process, it definitely would have been super, super valuable to have an actual coach. I really do believe that every person needs a coach at certain times, and that also includes coaches as well, like myself. And the next time I'm doing something which I've never done before, I'm definitely going to hire someone who is going to help me through this. And I'm not saying this to pitch my own coaching services. I'm saying this because at the end of it, I lost objectivity. I got greedy with the process and I was pushing too hard with the calorie deficits during times when it was not appropriate. And also earlier on, I was too easygoing or conservative or lazy with the calorie deficit and was not pushing as hard as I probably could have. And at the end of it, especially when muscle loss is a bigger concern, strength loss is a bigger concern, it definitely would have been invaluable to have an objective eye who is gonna tell me what to do and allows me to get out of my own head. And yes, I've gotten greedy at the end. I was too focused on just getting leaner, seeing that number on the scale move, and I paid for it. And objectively speaking, probably I did end up losing some muscle mass. So if I did everything perfectly, maybe I could have ended up at 77 kilos instead of 76. And I also lost some strength at the end of it, which is normal when you're getting to your peak level leanness but probably I also ended up losing a bit more strength than what would have been appropriate given how lean I have gotten. And then the very last lesson that I wanna share with you is, like I said, getting to this level of conditioning, unless you're genetically very, very lean, is not easy. I know that there are people out there that are claiming the opposite and that it's super simple and you're just doing these couple of random hacks, you know, skipping breakfast and 
I don't know, drinking black coffee or something like that, and then you're gonna be at seven or eight percent body fat in no time and with no effort. Yeah, the thing is, I can say that too, but I would be full of shit if I did that. And the thing is, the people who claim that are A, either never been actually that lean, B, maybe are genetically just super lean, C, maybe they are using some substances that you may not be knowing about, or D, I believe is coming up, are just full of shit and lying to you. And like I said, I could tell you that it was super easy and I have some super magical secret method that allows you to get all of this with no effort and not pushing through some tough stuff, but it would be a lie. And quite frankly, it would disrespect the people that have supported me through all of this and were patient with me, tolerated me being stricter with things like social events. And it would also be disrespectful towards myself because at the end of the day, I know that I had to push through some difficult stuff. And that is all to say that getting to this level of conditioning is a personal challenge. It is not a lifestyle for most of you guys. This is a work of art, basically. That is the best way to look at it. This is something to do one time or a couple of times a year, maybe as a personal challenge, something just to test yourself, what you can push through and just how good you can make your physique look. But this is not a walk around physique and quite frankly, not something that most of you guys will be able to maintain year round comfortably. And certainly this is not a body fat percentage that you have to get down to to start a lean bulking phase or something like that. Okay, once again, coming back to realistic perspectives on what certain body fat percentages mean. When people say that you should be 8% body fat before you start the lean bulking phase, well, yeah, 8% body fat looks something like this, okay? Getting here is not Rice Krispies. That's not a four week mini cut. It's not even an eight week long mini cut. That's a serious diet for most of you guys. So don't be overzealous about all of that stuff. And as you can see on the pictures that I presented in the beginning, you can still look lean, athletic, strong, and to be honest, really freaking good without being at single digit body fat percentages. And that is a body fat percentage that I can comfortably maintain year round, feel great, have great drive for life, energy levels, libido, all of those things. And it doesn't require not nearly the amount of sacrifices that getting into this kind of a condition requires. So keep that in mind, don't get too overzealous about how lean you should be getting to start a lean gaining phase or deserve the reputation of the fitness industry or any of that crap. So guys, those are some of the biggest lessons that I've learned from getting into this condition. I hope it was insightful and interesting. And if you enjoyed this, then once again, consider subscribing and hitting a like on this video. It would be truly helpful. And if you're interested in working together with me and getting help through your journey to getting leaner, building muscle and transforming your physique and maintaining it for the long term, then you can book a call with me and we can discuss what your goals are and whether or not we are a good fit on a free call. So consider hitting that link down below as well. Other than that, I want to thank you for your attention and yeah, I hope to see you soon in a future video. And with that, see you next time.